In this question, we're asked to find and classify the equilibrium solutions of the differential equation y prime equals negative 1 minus y over 2 times 1 minus y over 5 times y. So the first thing we're going to notice is that this is a first order autonomous uh, ODE. And uh, what we're going to look for is we're going to uh, start by looking for the critical points. So the critical points are the points that make the right hand side uh, equal to 0. So uh, the values of y that make the right hand side equal to zero. So you can convince yourself that these should be uh, when y equals two, uh, that makes this uh, first um, set of brackets zero. So y equals two is a critical point. Uh, y equals five makes this second uh, set of brackets um, zero. So that uh, makes the right hand side zero. So y equals five also is a critical point. And finally, obviously, if we let y equal zero, that also makes the right hand side zero. So y equals zero is also a critical point. So these are the critical points. And the next thing we can do is from these critical points, we can actually get the equilibrium solution. So the equilibrium solutions are uh, functions of x, very boring functions of x, uh, where we just set the function uh, equal to the critical point. So y of x equals two is an equi equilibrium solution. y of x is equal to five is an equilibrium solution, and y of x equals zero is an equilibrium solution. And you can check to see that these are uh, solutions of our differential equation by taking any one of these functions um, and plugging them in to the differential equation. You'll see that indeed you do get the right-hand side equaling the left-hand side. So here are three equilibrium solutions. Uh, of course, there may be other solutions to this differential equation. And so right now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, look at what happens uh, to other solutions uh, that are not these solutions as x goes to infinity? So the idea here is uh, we're going to um, draw a diagram or a, a chart. Um, and here's my y-axis. And we're going to put the um, equilibrium solutions in here. So this is y equals 0. Um, and what I'll do is I'll draw an approximately straight line uh, there. And then our second equilibrium solution was y equals 2. Here's y equals 2. And our third equilibrium solution is y equals 5, which is right there, y equals 5. And then we have the region that is above y equals 5. OK, so if, uh, if you had a solution um, or you needed a solution where um, one of the initial values or the initial value was that uh, y equals 5, that solution would always stay y equals 5. Same with uh, y equals 2 or y equals 0. And so what we're looking for now is what would happen if we had initial values that were not um, y equals 5, y equals 2, or y equals 0. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the right-hand side of the, um, the differential equation, and we're going to write down the factors. So we have negative 1, that's the first factor. Uh, the second one is 1 minus y over 2, that's the second factor. Uh, the third factor is 1 minus y over 5. And uh, the fourth factor is just y. This is very similar to doing uh, finding um, intervals of increase and decrease uh, when talking about sketching functions. Uh, so y equals 0, y equals 2, and y equals 5 are the only places where the right-hand side will be 0. So they are the only places where the derivative of some unknown solution will be 0. It's the only place uh, that that can happen. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take test points uh, in between these equilibrium solutions, these values, and we're going to see what is happening to the solution in that region. Is it, is it decreasing? Is it going towards um, the, so the equilibrium solution? Or is it going away from the equilibrium solution? So in addition to these uh, factors, what we're going to do is we're going to write uh, what is happening with dy by dx. So we would like to know the slope uh, of any solution that is in that region. Okay, so if we look at our differential equation, we see that the slope is the left-hand side. This is dy by dx. And so um, by figuring out what's happening on the right-hand side, we can figure out whether or not the slope of this unknown solution in that region is increasing or decreasing. Uh, so for example, let's start here. Uh, of course, in any of these regions, uh, when y is bigger than 5, um, negative 1 is negative. When um, y is in between 2 and 5, negative 1 is negative. When y is between 0 and 2, negative 1 is negative. And when y is smaller than 0, um, of course, negative 1 is negative. When y is bigger than 5, this term, um, 1 minus y over 2, is negative. 
um, when it's in between 2 and 5, when y is in between 2 and 5, this term uh, here is also negative. When y is in between 0 and 2, so for example, y equals 1, if you plug that in, you find that this, uh, this factor is positive. And for any y that is smaller than 0, this factor is again positive. Uh, we do the same thing for this factor, uh, 1 minus y over 5. Uh, when y is bigger than 5, uh, this is negative. When y is in between 2 and 5, this is positive. When y is between 0 and 2, this is positive. And when y is, is below 0, um, this factor is positive. Um, and for the last one, when y is greater than 5, then y is obviously positive. When y is in between 2 and 5, y is obviously positive. When y is in between 0 and 2, y is positive. And when y is below 0, uh, y is negative. And so now, um, with these, with knowing what these uh, factors are doing in these different regions, we can figure out what the slope of this unknown function is doing. Is this is this function increasing or decreasing uh, in these values of y? So negative, negative, negative times a negative times a negative times a positive is a negative. Uh, so in this region, uh, our solutions will always be going down. Uh, in between uh, y equals two and five, in here we have a negative times a negative times a positive times a positive which is a positive, which means our, our unknown solutions are always going to be going up, they're increasing. In between y equals zero and y equals two, in this region we have a positive times a positive times a positive times a negative, so that's a negative. So these are gonna be decreasing. And for below uh, zero, we have a negative times a positive times a positive times a negative, that is a positive, so that means uh, our unknown function in this region uh, will be increasing. And so what you can actually tell by this is any solution that is above uh, y equals zero, that starts above y equals zero, or sorry, y equals five, will be decreasing towards y equals five. Any solution that starts in between uh, y equals two and five will be increasing to y equals five. So this means that because uh, solutions from below are increasing and solutions from above five are decreasing to there, this is a stable equilibrium solution. If you look at y equals two, any uh, solution that started above y equals 2 will be moving away from it, and any solution that is below y equals 2 will also be moving away from it, therefore this is unstable. And finally for y equals 0, uh, any solution that starts below it will be moving towards uh, 0, uh, any solution that started above y equals 0 will be moving towards y equals 0, so this again is a stable equal equilibrium. So, at the end of the day, now we know uh, what our equilibrium solutions are, and we can say that y equals 2 is an unstable equilibrium, y equals 5 is a stable equilibrium, and y equals 0 is also a stable equilibrium.